This is around the type of the show that no matter how 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 good you are, you start to you know hit your limit, right? Hey everyone, welcome to Hot Dabs. This is the show with hot takes and even hotter rippers. I'm your host, Hashavelli, and today we're joined by Chauncey, aka Squints, founder of Squints Cannabis Company and child star, best known for his roles in Sandlot, Casper, Father of the Bride, Freaks and Geeks, and more. Chauncey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, brother. Happy to be here. Are you ready to rip some hot dabs with us today? Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> you mentioned before we came on air that you haven't dabbed for a while, so... You, you're saving all your dabs for, for this. the show. Exactly. Yeah, I'm here though. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a valiant effort. And we appreciate that valiant effort. It shows how down you are. And today we're gonna be starting out with some lemon limes. So to answer your question, if it is more lemon or more lime, I would say it's a pretty uh, equal medium between the two. It's almost like a seven up. So it has like that lemon lime spritzer to it, you know, mm. with a little bit of a carbonated feel. It is a uh, sour diesel crossed to biker OG crossed to key lime pie. Interesting. Right? Yeah, I like that. This one's bred in NorCal by 420 Nomad 707. Um, this was bred at the Luma facility, Luma, California, and it was also cultivated by them. So this is in um, Sonoma County. Um, so they get their name because they're in Petaluma, so Luma, California. They're located in the Luma Gap, so it's a micro terroir up there that's known for producing some of the best grapes in the region. So the cannabis tends to turn out awesome too because of the coastal climate, it stays cool, so it preserves those terps. 100%, yep. So. For our first dab, feel free to take a dabber. Would you like this one? I'll, I'll let you have first choice. That yeah, that one's good. Yeah. So we'll take our dabbers from the Apex Ancillary Board and I'll cut out a nice little chunk here. And for our first dab of the day, we're gonna be going in at 575 degrees. Sure. So as we heat these up, it's usually customary that during our first dab, I like to ask our guest about their first dab. Do you remember what your first dab was, where it was, who you were with? This is a little segment we call story time. Yeah, so my, uh, my first dab was definitely questionable, let's say that to say the least. Um, so I'm from LA. Um, We've seen the BHO movement come around pretty early, you know, like, you know, backyard, people blowing themselves up, mm -hmm. blasting tubes, some gnarly shit. Definitely skeptical at best, uh, <laughs> not knowing how to purge properly, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I, it was definitely something that, that would gross you out now for sure. I remember like pictures in my mind of blasting like hot ass dabs off of like questionable sorts of metal nails of like black like resin off of a parchment before <laughs> so you're talking about uh like the ti swings like those types of metal nails or just like the titanium even dome before nails before then bro like even before yeah like the dome titaniums if they were titanium the mm -hmm. stuff was from china we don't know what it was mm -hmm. you know what i mean the old school yeah. ceramic joints just like it might have been steel it was probably steel <laughs> do you remember your first dab yeah the very first one yeah i do um it was sparkling. It was sparkly hot. <laughs> no, I'm like, pretty sure it was the butane, but <laughs> was it the Fourth of July? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Why is it sparkling? Why is it sparkling? <laughs> yeah, it uh, it was some. It was probably some some like some OG butter that just wasn't whipped properly before we figured it out. You know what it was? Is that uh, what are we at? Five seventy five. Yep. All right, we're pretty damn close. So your first dab was a sparkler. Yes. <laughs> Who were you with? <coughs> Probably just some of the homies. <coughs> Remember we used to put wax in little, <coughs> he used to bring in these little plastic screw on tubes. Mm -hmm. Fuck bro. It was a, <laughs> it was a, <coughs> it was a fun time. 
Um, so that first dab, as you can tell, it wasn't too hot. That one was actually pretty tasty. That no, was nice, bro. It yeah. tasted great. We got good taste on that. Like I said, I'm, apparently I'm used to dabbing hot because, <laughs> you know, my career started in the infancy of the of the whole craze. Yeah, back then nobody knew any better. We all assumed that if you didn't go in immediately after torching it up, you were going to miss your hit. Exactly. So let's go back a little bit farther. Do you remember your first time ever actually smoking weed for the first time? Yeah. So I was... I guess it was sixth grade, sixth grade. So this is after, <laughs> after we shot, after we shot Sandlot. I came back, I was 11, sixth grade. I went to one school I got kicked out of. I went to another school. And the first time I smoked was with this chick that, uh, um, we had a class together or one of her friends and uh, <clears throat> she had brought this little like uh, stone, remember those stone pipes from like Venice back yeah. in the day or whatever? Yeah, she had like a little carved stone pipe. So we were definitely smoking Reggie in the field at my at Sutter Junior High School out of a little stone pipe. And it's funny because uh, one of my first times smoking weed ever, I got busted by my parents. And this is back when they had, uh, you had answering machines and shit, right? Or you had shared lines also. So when you picked up the phone, <laughs> somebody else just might be on up. that yeah. shit in another room oh, just listening, shit. bro. So check it out. So I'm on the line talking to her, telling her something about like, yeah, bring the pipe to school again tomorrow or this and that. Yeah. And my stepdad picks up the phone. So this fool turns on the answering machine and records me. <laughs> Not slick at all. So I'm sure we had whatever conversation, blah, 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 blah. And then my mom comes in and obviously like hems me up about it. And I'm like, how does, what the fuck is she talking about? How does she know this shit? You know what I'm saying? They tap my line. Yeah, they tap my line. Uh, Anyway, she cut, she cut like, uh, I think it was like one of the beginning of the school year or towards the beginning of the school year. And uh, she, she, we just had gotten new school clothes and she cut like all of my cool clothes. She like cut them up with scissors, like legs Holy off of them or this or that. She said, I'm gonna send you to school in khakis and a polo. <laughs> So she didn't know that that's what the gangsters wore anyway, so it kind of <laughs> just fit, right? I said, fuck, I'm going to fit right in now. <laughs> as you mentioned, um, your first time smoking was after the Sandlot. Um, as we all know that you played squints in the Sandlot, so if we go back a little bit farther, what got you into acting? Was it something that you liked, or was it something that your parents kind of got you into, and then you kind of fell into it as a career? It was just chance. I just happened to go somewhere with some people at the right time and they were there seeing an agent and uh, I was a little cute kid and they thought it would be cool to send me out on stuff and they bugged my parents and eventually they took me on something and then uh, I booked it and I just kept booking like everything regionally in Texas that uh, I was going out for down there, you mm -hmm. know? Um, how about the Sandlot? How did you get that role? Sandlot was like a normal audition. Um, it was a pretty crazy process though. We went back for it like three or four times. Um, and then we started to uh, almost like screen test for it and play mm -hmm. baseball during the day. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, we did that for a couple weeks before we went and shot. So it helped um, kind of build the bonds that you see later, you know? Yeah, the camaraderie between the mm -hmm. actors. Sometimes you do a project and like, you don't know, you just show up to work. You don't even really talk to nobody or meet anybody, you know? So it's interesting, these ones that they do spend the time to kind of build that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So when you're auditioning for that, did everybody know what role they were auditioning for? Or did you just come in as a young baseball playing youth and then they kind of made molded roles around the characters they found? It's a good question. Um, so I was reading for Yeah, Yeah originally. And then um, they kept saying they wanted me to read for Squints. And that kind of happened. Uh, and even then, we felt like, yeah, yeah, it might be a better role. Or like, uh, so we kind of were like, you know, fighting to be, oh, I'm reading for this too. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but I guess uh, the glasses ended up falling on fitting you. The frame, fitting <laughs> the frame better. And that's, you know, it worked out the way it worked out. Um, it's like but the, uh, things were still moving while we were doing that as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. It's like Cinderella's glass slipper, but it was Squint's glasses that fell on you. They just fit right. That's it. <laughs> so, this is the famous scene with you and Wendy Peppercorn. I have a couple questions. One, do you do your own stunts? Is this actually you in the water? And two, how long did you have to hold your breath for during this scene? Was there any chance of you actually blacking out underwater? <laughs> No, I swim like a fish, but uh, <laughs> contrary to, to popular lore, right? Squints couldn't swim. Uh, 
But no, I was on the water. I did shoot all that. They had dudes in there with the waterproof cameras. This is some pretty far out shit for the time period, you know? This is 92, so it was still a big, like, film production, you know? It was pretty cool. We shot this scene for a couple days. Um, it was cold as shit. You see us shivering <laughs> because uh, they had just filled the pool up a couple days before, so it was cold-ass water. And we shot this in Salt Lake City. And it was hot all summer, but on this day, it happened to be just like a little overclassed and like kind of cold. So we're all freezing to death. How many times? I remember. How many times did you have to jump in and like redo it, or was it one and done? No, nah, we did. We we shot. There was quite a bit of shooting going on. You know, this is in the film days, so redo, redo, redo. They they shot it. They made <laughs> sure they got it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It wasn't like you could just you know turn and leave the camera on shit's expensive so so you got to kiss her a couple different times yeah. more than yeah. just this once huh exactly quite a few spent a day <laughs> i spent a day on my first on my first kiss it wasn't a bad little <laughs> was this your actual first kiss life. yeah I'm yeah old, i was 11 you know? that's awesome i'm pretty sure so your first kiss ever was televised and it turned into one of the most famous kisses in the history of uh, movies i'd say pretty cool right yeah Okay, so going back to your filming career, mm -hmm. would you get high before you would film? I did that a couple times. Um, I didn't have a good experience. <laughs> you told me a little bit about it before we came on camera. Yeah, I, uh, I had got a new bubbler. Um, this is when we were doing Freaks and Geeks, and uh, we were shooting at some school, and it was like, it was far from where I lived at the time, so I had got there early to beat traffic in LA. And I was like, fuck, I got some free time. I didn't have a scene coming up to like later in the day. So I was like, fuck, I'm just gonna rip this and kind of pass out and then I'll get some food and then get, get ready and work and I'll be fine, you know? And uh, so I pulled out this big ass, like old school bubbler, bro, like a fucking fat one, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, roasted a couple of bowls. And uh, then I got to work and uh, they were like, Oh, Chauncey, it's great. You're here. We need to we need to get you right into makeup, but we moved your stuff up. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> I said, oh man, this is this, this is gonna be this is gonna be bad. What were you filming that day? Do you remember the scene? I don't. It was a school scene though, so it must have been some of the school stuff. Mm -hmm. Probably like smashing the Smashing the Twinkies. Smashing the you think Twinkies that was the day? The peanuts or something. <laughs> what, what was it? The Twinkies. Yeah, it was right? Twinkies, yeah. yeah. I was I was watching it last night. Can you turn it up a little? So those are the Twinkies you smash right there. Yeah, well, my that's young Chauncey. Yeah, young Chauncey. look at you. Welcome to You're dead, the '90s. So, you play this bully role, amazing. What? It was fun, bro. When you go through the comments on these YouTube threads, there's a lot of people that <laughs> love you to this day for the role you yeah. played. Even people that were bullied themselves, they actually appreciate your character. Um, was there a bully in your life or were you a bully? How did you play this character so well? Where did you gain the motivation from? Nah, I, I've been a, I've been a, uh, you know, I've always rooted for the, for the little guy. So I was never a bully, bro. That wasn't my vibe. I was the kid to like see some other kid picking on somebody and go like throw hands with them, you know? Yeah, you'd stick up for the underdog. Yeah, I beat a couple kids up early in like primary school over that shit. Like mm -hmm. messing with some little kid or some some big dummy and just go pop them once and mm -hmm. you know, that type of deal. So no, not a bully, but it was fun, bro. This was really well done. This dodgeball scene was epic. This we is shot this awesome for like the way a, they shot this, you know? Yeah, it was cool, man. They had camera on track on both sides. It was pretty dope. We had some fun. Look at that outfit. Close, right? Fire. <laughs> so this is the point, and this is uh, what a lot of people were commenting on about how great the writing was in the show because you did this as a prank. You actually <laughs> gave this kid food poison, or not food poisoning, he was allergic, so he almost died. But this yeah. is the scene where you go to the hospital. Uh-huh. This is the scene, yeah. And this is the scene that actually showed the other side of your character and the compassion that you had for the geeks. Yeah. Everybody on TikTok said I'm gaslighting them. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the one that blew up on yeah. TikTok? <laughs> Super gaslighting them. I'll, I'll tr try to kill them and then went to the hospital and said it was because they didn't let me play with them type shit. <laughs> <laughs> you made it all about you until the very end. And then it all ends with you eventually telling Bill that you would come uh, or you would consider going to the sci-fi convention with them, oh, but then fuck. you show up at the end and you this see them. lurk. 
outside on that little Schwinn. Right? Wow. The undersized Schwinn. And you want to do it, but you just can't at Looking the end. like I just stole that shit from somebody. And there you go. Never to be a geek. Yeah. Always to wonder wow. what could have been. This shit's pretty bad, huh? Right? <laughs> that, that leaves us to wonder what could have been with our next dab. Speaking of our next dab, it's going to be some Kembos. Have you ever heard of the Kembos before? Um, no, I haven't, but I'm assuming is it, is it, is it Kem and, and Moonbo or something? It's is this it? jar right here. It's, uh, oh, so. it's going to be Kem. You're correct on that. Mm -hmm. And actually, you're the second guest that has guessed uh, moon bows. I guess that makes sense because of the bows in it. But what it's just it, the rainbows. It's just straight Skittles. Yeah. So it's Chem D Skittles. Oh. So this one is bred by AT Hash, AT Genetics in NorCal. And this one is also cultivated by Luma Farms. So I'm going to go in on a little bit of a bigger size dab. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I'm going to show the QVC cam for all the. Here's the uh, in front of the arrow. Like, right behind the. Perfect. All right, for this next dab, we're gonna be going in at 600. Do you need a drink? <coughs> I've been drinking, I don't know if it's gonna help. I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> you okay there, Zeke? Everybody's falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're in this together. It's That's a the lot best of part. Pieces. It's all good, I get it, you know? We all know that you have Squint's Cannabis now. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk about what led to the path of creating this brand and how you kind of grew from your life of acting to now kind of full-time concentrating? You just told me that before you came here, you're mixing up um, nutrients for th what, 300 gallons worth of feed? Um, no, for one, for, for our flower cultivation, so yeah. yeah. Um, 300 lights. 300 lights, that's yeah. what you said, yeah. <clears throat> Um, but so uh, how did that take place? Where did the transition occur? Well, around uh, are we there yet? Six twenty-seven. So I'm about to be in. This one's gonna be a little bit spicier. great though that's good still tastes good z gets me really high and concentrate brandon will tell you that like uh he'll tell you that it gets it's very racy it gets you uh it gets you going you know tastes amazing though definitely tastes amazing shout out brandon <coughs> from third gen yeah big dog <coughs> i think i cheated on that one but don't worry about Fuck it. Fuck it. You win some, you lose some. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so going back to how you started to get kind of serious in the cultivation game, one thing about squints, there's a lot of celebrity cannabis brands emerging these days, but most of them are just uh, partnerships or <coughs> license agreements to where the yeah. celebrity is lending their <coughs> likeliness to... Um, the marketing, Somebody's but they don't, and they don't have to be able to sell it. Exactly. Yeah. They're not hands on in any way whatsoever with the cultivation or the operation side. But you, on the other hand, are the exact opposite. You are hands on. You are actually doing the growing. Can you kind of tell us about what led you to your first grow and when you really started to pursue it as a full time career? Um, I built my first room when I was young in my uh, I built my first room. I had a homeboy, my boy Dietrich, that uh, <laughs> He had a medical script in California, like pretty early on for LA. He had traveled around a little bit, but uh, he knew that the that the medical stuff was popping, like early 2000s, bro. Like early, early for that, you know. This is really for the early. semi for the semi, you know, gray area market. Ah, ah, ah. Little case of strep throat. Okay. Nothing to worry about. Very common this time of the year. I'm just going to write a prescription for you for two huge bags of weed. Um. So. I had got a script for 99 plants from a doctor in, in LA, um, a medical script, and uh, started attempting to like build real small shows and, uh, and grow cannabis, you know? 
So as you continue to grow, you had your uh, first grow, that was the six lighter. What was your next step from there? Um, it's technically gray area, so you're technically not illegal at that point, right? Because you could you have are. 99 I mean, plants. You're still going to jail. Yeah. Yeah, it was Why? a defense at best. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, it was early 2000s, mm -hmm. and people still went to jail with the with or without, you know, for weed cases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, yeah, dangerous still. Mm -hmm. So what, what was your next step after the six lighter? If we close that one down, um, <coughs> I had a few other, um, you know, few other areas in my life where I was around home grows and stuff like that. I had another house with some friends, um, but I ended up uh, working at a dispensary in the San Fernando Valley that's very prominent um, and uh, started behind the counter and ended up running the business with the gentleman. And uh, that's kind of where I got my like at scale education and micro business. You know that's what I mean? That's amazing, dude. Yeah. So you started as like a bud tender behind the counter or yeah, I served, worked your I, way up? I served, I served my way to the seat that I'm sitting in right now for sure. A hundred percent. big deal. That's amazing. Dude. <laughs> so that gave you, and I always talk about this because I also started like at the bottom as a trimmer, you know, mm -hmm. and just slowly worked our way up. But I think that's the best thing anybody can do because the biggest thing I think it gives you is the appreciation for every position that you're going to deal with, you know, like yeah. as a business owner, you're a, you're a leader of a team and for you to come up in that way, you have the appreciation for everything that goes on into it. You know, it's a huge education. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of work, you know, um, I understand every role cause I've done it or theorized how to do it mm -hmm. as we were evolving throughout the whole thing. You know what I mean? I remember us trying to like figure out how to package shatter like early. <laughs> we used to have, <laughs> slabs out on like frozen tiles that we would keep in a freezer and these fools would just break it and then package it down like that you know so as you kept scaling up when did you decide that you just wanted to start your own brand um it all just kind of happened organically mm -hmm. i had made that logo um i never had really intended on using that for for the brand but uh uh it kind of took off. It, I mean, when me and the foreign guys hooked up together, we kind of like, you know, made that jump together into branding cannabis in general. So uh, before that, like we might put the names on the jar or, or whatever, but you know, it was still 215 style, like served deli style fresh, you know? Mm -hmm. So there was no packaging or anything like that. Just like <clears throat> uh, sandwich baggies. No, we in LA jars. we had tubes, jars, you know, oh, plastic yeah, pop yeah. tops, big dog. You know, yeah, like we had bags tubes. too. We had Mar mylar early. My shop yeah. was running three and a half mylars, like, but they were clear. They were just, it was just a thing. Mm -hmm. Say Diamond Kush or fucking, you know, El Chapo OG or any of these other goofy names that we made up because we had twenty five OGs on the I shelf. I was just gonna ask you that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> was it all OG back then? Yeah. Sometimes I'll hear, sometimes I'll hear about cuts and shit, mm -hmm. and that shit literally came from. Green Dragon from me fucking writing a name on a jar, big dog. Like, really? Yeah, bro. Some of this shit has been around because we used to, like, you know, we had a... Things weren't the same. It wasn't this brand with this genetic and this and that. It was like a couple Blue Dreams, 10 OGs, a couple flavors here and there, and some staple sativas, and that was the menu, you know? <coughs> so what were so the different OGs? Up. What were some of them? Just the classic LAOG that was just straight. We gas. called it all types of goofy names because it was coming from so many different people. You know what I mean? But uh, true OG, true OG, yeah, bro. Anything you can name of, I've written on a jar before, bro. Or then put on a on a label maker and put that shit on a jar. You know? How do you do it? Frank's Red Hot Sauce. I put that on everything. <laughs> but with uh, your brand, these are original strains that you guys are breeding, right? Yeah. So no, I hunt. I hunt other people's gear as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, We've done okay. breeding Fino, projects. Yeah. I do pheno hunting. Um, I hunt other people's seeds. It's 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 like it's a monster in itself. You know what oh, I mean? I could completely. go breed seeds and and like you know I really grow weed, bro. So like mm -hmm. I could do any lane that I wanna I wanna kind of go with that route. But uh, but uh, no, I keep it true. It's easier for me to hunt something and find a winder or an expression that I like, and it's cool because everybody's got their own little their own little niche. You know. Mm -hmm. Definitely gonna need another water for this. <laughs> How you feeling so far? I'm fine. Coffee was a bad choice, but milk was a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, for our next dab, this is gonna be some Zlurdy 3. And now, a word from our sponsor. What brand do you really trust for all your stuff? Raws and Evolution from everything from their wash bags to their whipping tools. Dang, they got all that stuff? They do. Ooh, baby. <laughs> wash bags. Wash bags. Parchment paper. Parchment paper. Whipping tools. Whipping tool. Raws and bags. Raws and bags. No blowout. All bags. Every bag size. Raws and Evolution. Squish it all. <laughs> got him. This is the Zlur 3 so this is a Slur Cane Cross the Gelato 33. And these jars, like I just mentioned, are split down the center. Yeah. So um, it's the same exact strain from the same exact harvest, but it's cured two different ways, which means um, we let the consumers have two different expressions of uh, texture, of aroma, and taste. As you can see on the top, that's the cold cure. It's like a wet butter consistency, and the bottom side is a rosin sauce. It's like a granular um, micro golden caviar consistency. And now you have a chance to get away from this Alerty 3 by, by taking a, a dab fresh off the press. Are you ready for this? Yes, I'm gonna do it. All right, designated squisher. Yes, sir. Today we're going to be going in on a low temp plate using Rosin Evolution paper. The paper is going to be 55 pound and the mesh bags we're using will be 25 micron double bag Rosin Evolution mesh bags. Um, we're going to be squishing some, what, the, what is it, Trop Cherry? Tropicana. Tropicana? Co cookies? Trop cookies from August of 2022. Trop cookies from August of 2022. So this is a vintage, a vintage batch. Term. Brought out for fresh off the press. Yeah. So the technique that a lot of people have been doing here is kind of like a rail grind. We, got, we call this the Darby rail grind. He kind of was the one that um, started it. Uh, the drip is going to come down and he, I bet he, did. he started at the left and went to the right and it all dripped into the nail. Um, so you could do that or you can just get one part of the drip, uh, whatever you prefer. All right. Here he goes. Squints is going in here at 650 degrees with a beautiful angle. As you can see, he got that dab directly into the banger. Banger has attachment, carb cap on banger. Beautiful inhale, exhale. Things are going great, lovely. This dab sponsored by Rosin Evolution. <coughs> Low temp plates, squints, inhaled, three seconds, scorching dab. Judges <coughs> give it 9.5, 9.5, yeah. 9.6, 9.6. Ten. <laughs> and the rest of that squish is looking great. Great no. form. <laughs> double dipper. Great technique. Yeah, a little double dipper, huh? <laughs> Look at the color on that. Nah. That's beautiful. In my younger days, I would have definitely <laughs> put that back in, but uh, I'm a, I'm a little rusty. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna slow motion. You know, we gotta get make it home after this. <laughs> that was a great squish. Beautiful material. Beautiful. Shout out Rosin Evolution. Vintage. The paper so, held up. You know. The bag held up. That was a two year old <laughs> resin. How was it tasting for being two years old? It tastes like trop. It was wonderful here. While we're here, don't forget, folks at home, to join the Patreon for the full unedited episode. This gives you full access to all episodes early as well as to the unedited version. Patreon. For everybody at home that doesn't want people to chaz their bangers, My sorry. Bad, huh? <laughs> Sorry, we're chasing them. Yeah. I thought they were supposed to change colors. Actually, this isn't even our banger, so I am actually sorry, Rosin Evolution. <laughs> <laughs> we really chazzed that one. That one needs a new banger, big dog. All right, I'm going to go in real quick on this Zerdy 3. We already got the clock ticking down before your next, or I guess both of our next dab. This was dab number three, though. You're doing a great job, man. 
For somebody that said they don't dab that often, or you've been on a break, you, you look like you've been dabbing every day. Darby was literally doing circuits, he said, when he was getting ready for his episode, where he was eating like 100 yeah. milligrams a morning. <laughs> yeah, Darby's next level, bro. And uh, uh, ripping 750s, That's you know? That's the homie, bro. Don't fuck around and... He's one of them, don't, don't, don't threaten me with a good time type of catch, <laughs> right? you know? Yeah. He's ready for the rodeo, my friend. Shout out Dr. Darby for always being down. Part of the wolf pack. And now I know for sure, I just added two more guys to my wolf pack. That's right. Ow! <laughs> Big dog. You like joints or blunts more? I smoke joints. Yeah. Uh, I smoke joints regularly now. Uh, I've had my days. I went through my blunt phases, multiple eras of them, multiple different blunts, you know? I grew up smoking blunts, but the weed was bad, so What kind of what eras did. of blunts did you go through? We All talking of them? White House, Swishers? Nah, White House. Backwoods? Alice. Everybody knows you don't smoke White House. Back you, in you PA, never even you went, yeah, yeah, I was in PA. That's right, yeah. it's different. Out here, White House are like, they're yeah, like a, a different type of thing, up you know what I'm saying? Better, yeah. Um, what no, about no, no. games? Huh? Games? No, like never. Greens? We went through Garcia Vegas. Uh, okay. Garcia Vegas to Swishers. Philly Blunt was before Swishers, right? Yeah. The Phillies. The we would owls. get what you're saying. That's what the owls are. Exactly, yeah. yeah. We didn't, owls didn't make it to California, though, so that's not, that wasn't the branding out here. You know what I'm saying? Huh. But I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Pittsburgh originally, so. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm from. Yeah, I I'm never from knew PA. that. No yeah. shit. Is that where you're from? Because you were mentioning yeah, the Steelers I'm earlier. Yeah, I'm from Western PA. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm from, yeah. Shout out Pittsburgh, in, everybody at home. Yep. Shout to the Still City. You Coming know? out, fucking killing it. Yeah. Man. I'm from like Beaver Falls area. No shit. Yeah. yeah we used. I Both used to play for. Family, uh, I used to play for fucking Blackhawk. So like, we were always playing Beaver Falls. Really? Yeah. Interesting. All right, small world. I'm going in at. That's why you're a cool motherfucker. Six fifty. Pit, bro. <clears throat> the yins. All right, 685, so I'm about to go in. This one's for the yinzers. This one's for the yinzers at home. Exactly. Oh, shit, it's fire working off like your sparkler. That's a real deal. That's a real one. Yee. I'm going to regret that. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Always. <coughs> <coughs> yep. All of it. Get it. Get it all and then just shake it away and go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> I like this, dude. I need somebody to just be talking like motivational quotes to me every time I'm ripping one. <laughs> like the David Goggins are ripping that. Yeah. <laughs> get, your, get your inner bitch out. <laughs> Get the smoke out of the fucking rig. I feel like <laughs> Move I, on to the next. I feel like we got a video in us, the David Goggins. <laughs> I'm smoking dabs. <laughs> fucking hell. I'll just be riding in a golf cart beside him, jogging, ripping dabs out. Yeah. He'll be calling me a bitch the whole way. You little bitch. <laughs> in your golf cart. <laughs> ripping your fucking dabs. I want to participate in a little segment we like to call the Hasher Snack Munchie Review. Okay. This is the Hasher Snack Munchie Review. Sponsored by Hasher Snacks, the snack that smacks back. Hasher Snacks. Small batch handmade gluten-free. These bad boys are honey roasted chipotle peanuts infused with single strain hash rosin. The good stuff. All the snack with all the smack. Every box includes a trading card inside. You don't know what you get until you pop it open. Great product. Asher Snacks. Have a box. Thank you, sir. I love this. You ready to try some of these and see if you can get me to take a hotter yeah. dab? So for every one you get right, I'll, t I'll add 10 degrees to my next dab. So what are the rules? Like, is it like, I got to nail it? Or is it like, if we're like ballpark, we got Jeopardy? I'll give you ballpark. Okay. But uh, I'll also give you a category to go off of. No, I can't actually. It's fine. I'll, I'll, take, the, I'll take the Pepsi challenge. This one's from Melba's Fixins. You can just take a sip and then try to guess. You can smell it also. Aroma does play a factor. And let me see that so I can show the folks at home Sorry. exactly what they're. Don't that apologize. Fire. Don't apologize. Those are my terps. Folks at home. I'm probably not going to get it, but it's definitely like a. It's like a spicy, 
Is it like horchata soda almost? Yeah, pretty much. He got it. I'll add 10 to my score. The Is answer, it really? Yeah, the answer was carrot cake. Close enough. <laughs> 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 Carrot cake makes sense now. It had that I spicy, I got the spice, and then I went with horchata because it's a cinnamon, you know? Mm, it's purple-ish, or is that the light? Red. Mm, can't smell that one. This one's from Lester's Fixins. soda <laughs> really that's probably what it is yep three for three i gotta add 30 <laughs> degrees black olive soda <laughs> i said that shit that shit was trash know your fucking place trash <laughs> just like dirty martini like uh, from, a, from a shitty dive bar <laughs> <laughs> so that's 30 degrees i gotta add to my uh my bad big next dog. dab Sorry. That, no, you're all that, good. That flavor's, that flavor's trash. <laughs> I like black olives too, but it all reminds right. me of my kid's song. We'll do one more and then we'll, we'll move on. This is the last one. If you get this, I'm looking at a scorcher. So far, you've been spot on. <laughs> Looks like a highlighter. Sorry. Mm. Mm. Was it like cactus cooler? Yep. Four for four. You got them all. Soda. All right. He got them all. <laughs> <laughs> so for our next dab, we're going to be going in on some gush mints. So this is some Gushmans from uh, Mendocino Mountain Farms. Just realized I grabbed the wrong jar. So instead we're gonna be smoking some key lime pie. Nice, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> I like key lime pie. Pivot, yeah, check, smell that out. Yeah, let me check it out. Yes, that's nice. Nice, right? I love key lime pie. Yes, I wish it was a better flower. I would grow it. Yeah, that's the unfortunate side of it. Sometimes things just don't yield. So our next dab is gonna be 700, but since you nailed all four of those flavors, I'm gonna have to go in at 740 degrees. Jesus. This is around the time of the show that no matter how, how, how good you are, you start to you know, hit your limit, right? So I got to go in at 740 because he just nailed all those soda selections. Yeah, Gushment. It's got a pleasant flavor to it. it reminds me of like, it's got a, Gushment has a pleasant flavor to it. It reminds me of a, like cushy vibes, you know, like real cush, master cush, things of that nature, you know? That was that key lime pie I gave you, don't forget. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. But it does have that super sweet Kush vibe to it. I guess it does, huh? Yeah, it does. I smell. totally it, thought it, it was it Gush smell, it, it smells like a, cu a Kush, honestly. Oh, shit. I got to go in at 740. 850. Okay, so I'm still good. All right, we got some random questions while we're high here. Yes, sir. What's one thing that always brings a smile to your face? Uh, my children. My kids, man. The Utes, the Little Duns, as the homie prodigy would have said, you know? Uh, yeah, the kids, bro. Kids are pure. Kids bring a smile to my face. If you don't like kids, you're an asshole or a questionable human being. Mm -hmm. Did I stutter? What's one temptation you can't resist? Hmm. Tiramisu. Oh. 
That's a good answer. Affogato. Coffee and ice cream. I love that shit. Yeah? Yeah, I'm a sucker. How do you take your coffee? Always. All types. Yeah. What's your go-to karaoke song? I sung... Uh, what did I sing? Oh, here's a cool story. Uh, <coughs> we're in Iowa for the Field of Dream game, right? Mm -hmm. I went and played with the Sandlot guys with like, you know... Legends, Ricky Henderson, Ozzy Smith, Reggie Jackson, like all these cats, you know, and That's Wade amazing. Boggs, and then like other 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 actors and actresses from all different eras and shit. At the Field of Dreams, we played a softball game, and we're staying at some hotel in like this town in Iowa. And uh, Boggs afterwards, this full drinks Miller Lite, like he's he's a legend for like his drinking game Wade and Boggs? his baseball game. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah, he's, he's got a the legend. Record. Always Sunny yeah, has an episode about him. Yeah, he's a legend, bro. <laughs> I didn't know about Boggs until me and Boggs hung out. So, so I sung I sung Leonard Skinner, uh, "Simple Man," with Wade Boggs, fucking backup singing backup for me next to me at this little bar in Iowa. And when I got done, he whispered in my ear, drunk as fuck, and was like, "I was fucking beautiful, brother." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Oh shit, this this is the karaoke <sighs> moment of Holy <laughs> shit, karaoke dude. moment." <laughs> Do you have Wade Boggs' number? Yeah, I got his number. Call him up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't spoke with him in a while, but we could. Let's see what the fuck he's up to. I'm not going to call Wade. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll come to it another time. You don't know what you're going to get, bro. I don't want to put the homie out yeah, there like that on yeah. speakerphone, you yeah. know? Wait, oh, Wade these guys Boggs. are these. This dude's from the '80s. They're reckless. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't. We'll get Wade canceled yeah. within ten seconds. Ten seconds flat, flat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he called us the. He called us the little leaguers all day. He's cool as fuck, though. How but, old were uh, you at the time when we did that? Yeah, this wasn't. This was a few years ago. This. Was okay, like, you yeah. weren't little kids. No, yeah. no, no. I was it's just like say a, slugging beers. Yeah, as no, a twelve-year-old no, no, no. with Wade Boggs. No, this is like three or four years. Ago. That's lit. No. The so you were one, you were in like the game with the cornfield and shit. Yeah, it was pretty yeah, fucking. That's cool. pretty cool, right? Yeah, I had three hits, bro. I had a good game. It was nice. solid, bro. What kind of like what were the teams called? I forget what the teams are called. I have the jerseys somewhere. There's some cornfields. It was very cornfieldish. Was it corny? Yeah, it was. No, it was dope actually. <laughs> you could see you. how <laughs> no, not not for real though, but you can see how it, it it think you think about it and it could sound like it's corny, but no, it was cool as fuck, bro. It was like one of my coolest. One of my, my best experiences ever, to be honest. So we're on our last dab. Totally. You made it through, man. Yeah. We're on the last one. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <coughs> I'm glad I'm getting a pass, but in the, in the defense, I think I took, it a, I took it a little easy. This is the GMO, so this is going to be our last dab. So this yeah. is the GMO, which you probably know is super sandy. Like when you touch mm -hmm. those coolers, you can just feel all the heads on your hand. Yeah. You can see them super granular. Um, so this is going to be the last dab. Do you have any flour that you could show us that, that you brought? Did you bring any? Yeah. In your I magic. I going to look, but I'll bring it over here. So yeah. we might be able to get something. I brought a little something. This is some of that Valley Girl. How long do you usually like to take your stuff? Till it's done. Pass you, bitch. You just keep. <laughs> <laughs> And that could vary for any number of reasons, but yeah. <laughs> you look for like milkiness, or do you let them um, get a little amber? I just know when to pull the room, dog. I don't be looking at shit like that, to be honest with you. I just know when it's ready. Yeah, you go by feel. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I respect that. School. You're in the room. Yeah, you're feeling yeah. it out. What do we have here? <clears throat> Some Valley Girl OG. Damn. So, what? Can you disclose the lineage on this? It's it smells. I actually don't yes. know. I actually don't know the lineage on it, to be, be honest, right at, off the top of my head. But uh, it's a cut I was looking for that's super fire and that, um, you know, it's a little bit different, but still has the gassy, like, real OG vibes to it. Pure OG vibes. Yeah. Are you ready to rip this last dab? Not really, but... <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you, bro. I've made it further than I thought I would. To You've been be doing a great job. You yeah. don't have to rip the last one, but I do have to give you the option. If you want to partake in the last dab mini game, is there a list? Am I going to be on it? Pull up the leaderboard. <laughs> Darby's trying to come back and get uh, a shot at the leader at the <laughs> very Wait, end is of the that season. Marcus up there? 
That's Marcus, dude. Nature's Fuck Lab. Marcus. Um, of course he's at the fucking... The second board. place, Super Chill. Third place, Hummerbird Hills. But he was disqualified. That wasn't a real 900. Sorry. Sorry, Ray. Still love you. Dr. Darby would technically be in third right now. Dr. Darby is harping in my ear trying to come back already. Dr. Darby, wait your turn. Might bring you back for the Champions League. But so that's the list. And these are the people that held in a 900 degree dab and for how long they held it in for. Fucking hats off, gentlemen. They're crazy, right? Yeah. So if you want to partake Smokers. in that, you get the chance at the bragging rights, the free uh, Dr. Dabber Evo. You get the championship hot dabs belt and you get the bragging rights. Uh, I'm, I can't compete with Marcus, bro. I'm just going to take a hard pass on that one. I respect that completely. <laughs> that's what I figured. After that time, it's going to be hard for anybody. Yeah. Like, why would you even try? Like, I mean, I wouldn't have tried to beat most of those times, yeah. but yeah. All right. So I'll just do a 750 with you. Let's do it. We all believe in you and you're doing a great job. What was the coolest location you got to go to uh, throughout your career? Um, that's a good question. I've been to Vancouver a couple times. I've shot some stuff there. Vancouver's a cool ass city, bro. Yeah. Um, cool vibes. Uh, Mountain vibes. Vancouver has everything. Yeah, it's yeah. North Pacific Northwest vibes. You know, it's beautiful lakes north of Washington. I mean, you know, it looks uh, twilight vibes, everything vibes. Glass buildings, clean city. Vancouver used to be really cool. They shot a lot of film there, so you spent a spent a good amount of time there. that one taste tastes great I think I'm gonna start smoking hash again what's some advice that you would give to somebody that would be trying to follow in your footsteps in the industry <sighs> um work hard uh do more than you're paid for always uh take passion and pride in it and respect the people that came before you that that uh paid prices for you to be here like this and um you know be good to her and she'll be good to you that's great advice yeah i couldn't have said it better myself well you did it you ripped the 575 you ripped the 600 you ripped the 650 the 7 and the 750 you made it all the way through with the Darby in the in the house. With the Dr. Ow. Darby in the house. You did the to fresh back off. there. You pushing his <laughs> he was my he was my hype man hyping me on off stage. <laughs> Big dog. He did it, Darby. He made it look easy. He did the fresh off the press. I got a little drippy drip. It was dope. <laughs> yeah. First ever you said. Oh yeah, that was dope. That's I mean don't get fresher than that, right? <laughs> Right we squeezed this shit into the nail, bro. Right. <laughs> and Patch it was a vintage. Press. Patch to press. Hey, that might be the future right there. That's right. some that's some high-end cannabis connoisseur shit. Right. Once again, we got we got a cool ass job, bro. If if in our early cannabis enthusiasm, if you would have told us we'd get to do cool shit like this today, you wouldn't have believed it. So I wouldn't believe it. Hats off to all the people and 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 you know people that made this happen. Anything else you want to say to the people? This is your time. You earned it. This camera, mm. that camera, this camera right here. Uh, you know, we have a store coming, Squints Times Foreign. Uh, it's opening in the Valley. It's on Mason and Roscoe. It's a retail. Uh, it's going to be a dope, a dope spot. And I'm from the Valley, so I'm happy to get a shop in the Valley. That's and, awesome. Uh, it was a social equity license that was like one of my homeboys who's a real cannabis pioneer and and war hero you know veteran mm -hmm. type of deal so uh um it's cool it's cool to bring cool people together and do cool shit so i'm excited about what we have in front of us the brands will evolve uh get to give people good quality medicine and care about it and uh should be bright futures <coughs> 
so that's the Squints Foreign collab. You're about to have the retail coming out. Yeah. You already heard that he's going to have the Valley Girl OG coming out. He has the Wendy, the Wendy 2.0. Be on the lookout for everything from Squints. They're killing it in every aspect. Be on the lookout for a collab with us. We might put something together. Yeah, I got an idea. Oh, shit. Hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> I completely forgot the last segment. I have portraits. Oh, that's right. Let's draw. I feel like I need to unbutton my pants a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Definitely gonna show. Oh, we got crowns too. Look, I got crowns, bro. Dope. All right. Portrait. You just draw Self-portrait. how you're feeling. It can be you. It can be anybody. It can be just your inner expression, outer expression. Yeah. Just draw how you're feeling. This is a high self-portrait. <laughs> Man, I'm stoned. Mm-hmm. I'm like so lightheaded. Oh, that's that crush me. My interpretation of a seedling. You wanna sign the bottom? The future. <laughs> yes, sir. We're gonna put these in the lookbook. I feel like I just hit a homer at the sand lot and they went over the fence and the beast is about to get that shit. And it's my dad's home run fucking ball from Babe Ruth. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's I'm gonna actually take that and make a clothing brand out of that, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Run it. All right. Glad to be an inspiration. Thank you for joining us today, dude. We really appreciate you. No, time. I'm happy to be here, bro. I'm glad I, I made the trip and I'm glad I held my composure and it was fun. It was a cool, cool You did experience. a great job, man. So everybody be on the lookout for Squints at your local shop, and he's going to have his local shop soon, the retail store with Foreign. I'm stoned as fuck. Thank you for joining us today, everybody. We'll see you next week.